Last year, I was very big on the Cincinnati Bengals heading into the 2013 season. You're always trying to project those teams that you think are going to catch people by surprise that have a lot of the fundamentals in place to make a big jump. And I looked at the Bengals before last season and thought they were going to be that team in the AFC. Um, they really didn't take that next step. They kind of were more of the same. Uh, well, in 2013, to be fair, they did win the division, but they made the playoffs, and then it was another early playoff exit for the Cincinnati Bengals, the third year in a row. And I look at the Cincinnati Bengals heading into the 2014 season, and I say either this team is going to shit or get off the pot. Either this team is going to take that next step and do more than just make the playoffs and lose in the opening round, or they're going to sit there and just continue to tease everybody, if you know what I mean. So when we look at the Cincinnati Bengals, what's kind of gotten them into that position? Well, over the past few years, it's been a relatively decent amount of success in the NFL draft. You look at 2011 getting A.J. Green in round one, and yes, even Andy Dalton in round two. A lot of people have what they want to say about Andy Dalton, and a lot of it bears out to be true. That is sure. However, they did find an NFL starting quarterback in the second round that has been highly productive in his three seasons at the helm. A lot of teams could do a lot worse with their drafts. So when you look at 2011, you bring in A.J. Green, you bring in Andy Dalton. They've made the playoffs every year since. You know That was definitely an organization changer. There's no question about it. You look at their 2012 draft, their first round pick, one of them anyways, Kevin Zeitler, the guard out of Wisconsin. He's been pretty good. And then their second round pick this past draft, Gio Bernard, the running back from North Carolina, came in and provided some nice plays out of the backfield. Haven't had a ton of misses. Probably the closest thing I would classify as an early round miss might have been Dante Mock a couple of years ago. Uh, but they do still have some questions. The other 2012 first round pick, Dre Kirkpatrick, has really done nothing since coming out of Alabama. And that is a big weakness for this Bengals team is their secondary. And it was something that they were hoping somebody like a Drake Kirkpatrick was going to be able to address. And he just hasn't yet. He really hasn't done much of anything. Their 2013 second round pick, Marcus Hunt, the defensive end from SMU, really didn't play much last year. And you look at the fact he'll be 27 this year. You know, they need him to produce and they need him to produce in a big way, especially with a guy like Michael Johnson leaving the team, going to the Buccaneers via free agency. Now, the Bengals in this draft have a total of eight picks, so they're sitting in an okay position. They're not in a dominant position or anything like that. But with the success they've had in recent drafts and the talent on that roster on both sides of the football, the good thing for the Bengals is, is that in this 2014 draft, they don't necessarily have to draft per, per need per se. They can really follow a best available player strategy. Um, what they do need to do, though, with those best available players, they also need to identify those guys that are going to help take this team from being an entry-level playoff team to being a deep-run playoff team by finding those players that are truly impact players that can help take this team to the next level. Again, with the drafting of guys like A.J. Green and Kevin Zeitler and Gio Bernard, and you can even throw maybe a Tyler Eifert into the mix, um, even Andy Dalton to a lesser degree, you can sit there and say that they don't have a ton of knees because they've had some other successes in recent drafts even before. Guys like Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins, even though he'll be coming off a knee injury. Uh, getting a guy like Vontez Perfect as an undrafted free agent. You know, they've done a good job at assembling this team, affording them this luxury to kind of go in there and just find impact players regardless of position best available player type of scenarios. They do have some needs, though, for the Bengals that I think even with that best available player strategy, they're going to have to address. Number one has to be corner. This is a team right here that the corners that they do have are old. How long are you going to rely upon them? They've really got nothing out of Dre Kirkpatrick. Are they going to think that he's going to evolve and is he going to grow and is he going to become a starting NFL corner or not? Um, offensive tackle, I think, is a need. With losing a guy like Anthony Collins, you've kicked Whitworth inside to guard, which is probably where he needs to stay. stay. So, you know, protecting Andy Dalton's blind side or maybe another quarterback down the road is going to be a very important thing. They need help at safety. They need a big impact center fielder type of free safety. Defensive end. You know, yes, you drafted Marcus Hunt in the second round last year. You've still got Dunlap in the fold, but you did lose Michael Johnson, so you need to address depth at that position. And 
especially if a hunt's not going to be able to fill those shoes of a Michael Johnson. You need somebody that could come in and start. You know, it might be time for the Bengals to consider drafting another quarterback or drafting a quarterback early. Either A, to put some pressure on Andy Dalton to get him to perform at a higher level consistently, or B, to be prepared if Andy Dalton falls on his face in 2014, doesn't take that next step, doesn't take this team to the next level. Maybe you've got that young franchise quarterback waiting in the wings. For the Cincinnati Bengals, this is a key draft because after three straight years of making the playoffs, three straight years of first-round playoff exits, you don't want to continue to remain on that same track and that same cycle. You'd rather lose 10 or 11 games and get a top 10 pick than get to the playoffs and get bounced in the first round. That's a worse thing to do almost, is just kind of be mediocre. And the Bengals are a little bit above mediocre, but not that much, because they're ultimately stuck in that same position. This 2014 draft will be critical for this organization as they try to find some impact players at some key positions as they try to take that next step and become real contenders in the AFC.